today we're going to be looking at uh, dative prepositions. And as usual, I'm going to begin the presentation with an example sentence in English. Um, specifically, what I'm going to be looking at in this sentence, the English sentence, is the equivalent of a dative prepositional phrase. Now, in English, we, I don't think that this particular preposition which is with is a dative preposition, but it's going to be the example we're going to be using in the following German sentences, so we're going to start there. Um, then I'm going to go through and analyze a German sentence uh, with a dative prepositional phrase, show you how it's put together, throw two examples in. One will be a uh, masculine noun, the other one will be a feminine noun, and show you how the dative preposition changes the uh, the definite article, or in this case, the, the possessive adjective. Uh, finally, we're going to look at the uh, at a list of dative prepositions, and um, I'll go through and sort of give the nuances of of what of each preposition. Prepositions are perhaps the most difficult part of any language. Uh, there's a lot of extra baggage that comes along with prepositions, uh, meanings, nuances that only comes with lots of practice. So I'll kind of go through those and give you a heads up on that. So let's look right now at the English sentence. I travel with my mother. Now, the English sentence has a subject, first person singular, personal pronoun, I, and this is the nominative case. This is the subject of the sentence, the one who is the person that's doing all of the action. And what is that action? Traveling. It's a first person singular verb, I travel. Now, what we have here with my mother is what we call a prepositional phrase. It tells you the manner in which I travel. Uh, what's interesting here is that uh, with the preposition, with my mother, um, it doesn't change the word my at all. I could say I see my mother, I uh, kiss my mother, uh, that is my mother. Uh, that is my mother, that would be a nominative construction. I see my mother, I kiss my mother, that would be an accusative construction. In all those instances, my mother remains unchanged. Uh, that's not the case in German. In German, uh, when we throw a noun into a dative prepositional phrase, it's going to change the endings. It's going to change the definite articles. So let's take a look at that. Uh, same sentence, but in German. Ich fahre mit meiner Mutter. We have the subject of the sentence, a first person singular personal pronoun, ich, the nominative case. This is the thing, the person is doing everything in the sentence, this ma the main actor, the subject. And what is this person doing? Ich fahre. First person singular verb, subject verb agreement. Now, this is where things get interesting. We have the Date of preposition mit, with, and what follows that is going to be a date of prepositional phrase. So mit meiner Mutter. Uh, now you're probably thinking, well, wait a minute. I thought it's meiner Mutter, feminine. For instance, ich fahre mit should be meiner Mutter. Uh, however. Whenever you drop, in this, instance, in, in this instance, a feminine noun into a dative prepositional phrase, the prepositional phrase is everything that comes between the dative preposition, mit, and the very end of the sentence, the period, or actually the, 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 the noun that immediately follows. That's all going to be thrown into the dative case. So in this instance, I simply have one word, meine, and that changes from meine to meiner, Mutter. Now I have one word here, but I could also have a hundred words. Everything that comes between the dative preposition and the noun that immediately follows that preposition, even if there is one or a hundred words in between that, um, that is all going to be part of the dative prepositional phrase is going to be in the dative case. So mina, or a, which is a possessive adjective, changes from a nominative mina to a dative miner. Now let's take a look at another example 
which would be masculine, mein Vater. Uh, in the nominative, mein doesn't take an ending. It's a nominative masculine, so it's simply mein Vater. However, when I take mein Vater and drop it into a dative prepositional phrase, which follows mit, it's going to change from mein to meinem Vater. Ich fahre mit meinem Vater. So, the thing that we have to be aware of is we, well, we first have to know what the date of prepositions are, and I'll get to that in just a second. But we also have to be aware of the concept of this date of prepositional phrase. Um, we looked at this prior with accusative prepositional phrases, so this is sort of the same concept, except instead of taking an accusative object, uh, data prepositions are going to take a dative object. So anytime you drop in a noun into a data prepositional phrase, that all has to change into dative. Now, what are the dative prepositions? I have a list here on the screen. I'm going to go through these uh, one by one. Uh, the first one is aus, and there's actually a sort of a jingle. It's, uh, it's um, the one I learned when I was learning German. Um, it's bla uh, based on, I think, Strauss's Blue Danube. It goes aus, außer bei mit, von Zeit nach zu gegenüber. Gegenüber being the one that doesn't really fit into the rhyme, so it comes at the end. Um, aus means from, out of, or made of. So, for instance, er kommt aus dem Haus, he's coming out of the house. He's leaving the house. He's exiting the house. Now I could also say that Tisch is aus Holz. The table is made of wood. In this instance, to express the concept made of, I would use the date of preposition aus. The next one, außer, uh, means except or beside. Alle kommen außer Petra. Everyone is coming with the exception of except Petra. She's not coming. Now, by means near, at, for, or with. So er wohnt bei seinem Großvater. He's living with his, or at the residence of his grandfather. Er steht bei mir. He's standing by me. Uh, so it could either be a physical concept, that someone is physically standing next to me, or it could also imply that he's residing at a place uh, at a certain address with a person. Um, mit, with, which we saw before, uh, or by means of. So for the prior example, I'm traveling with my mother. Uh, this one right here, er fährt mit seinem Fahrrad. He's traveling by means or with his bicycle. Von, uh, der Brief ist von Hans, is from Hans. Uh, is the letter was is from Hans. Uh, let's see, we could also say um, das Buch is von mir geschrieben worden, which is a little more complex. What, what I'm saying is the book was written by me. Uh, seit, since. Er wohnt seit acht Jahren in Deutschland. He's been living for eight years, or since eight years, for the space of eight years in Germany. Um, seit is interesting. It implies that there's a specific point in time in the past. And from that specific point in the time in the past, up to the present moment, I've been doing something continuously without interruption. Um, ich spiele die Gitarre. Seit acht Jahren. I play the guitar. I've been playing the guitar for eight years. Um, nach means to or after. Er fährt nach München. He's going to Munich. He's traveling to Munich. Um, er kommt nach mir. He's coming after me. So when you're traveling to a distant location, a city, a big place, a city or a country, you would use nach. However, the next preposition, zu, which also means to, at, or for, um, you would use th that if you're traveling to a place inside of a city. Uh, for example, a fat zum supermarket. He's traveling to the supermarket. Um, ich bin zu Hause. I am at home. 
And then finally we have gegenüber, which is, means sort of across from, opposite kitty corner from, uh, for example, die Bank liegt dem Bahnhof gegenüber. Uh, the bank is across the street or a kitty corner from the train station. Now, gegenüber is interesting because all of the other prepositions come before the object. However, gegenüber traditionally or, or tends to come after the date of object. So, die Bank, which would be the subject, nominative, liegt, or is positioned, or lays. Um, then suddenly, without any type of preposition, we dive immediately into the date of dem Bahnhof. And before we could have, before we could ask ourselves why that's dative, we get the answer gegenüber the date of uh, the date of preposition across from. So, dative preposition.